And hello, my front porch friend. So good to see you this afternoon. I actually wish that you were here with me right now. because you can see, I'm in a bit of an unusual place because I have a bit of an unusual word to share with you that I'm really looking forward to talking about. I am actually not far from my house, believe it or not. If you take the back roads, I'm just a few miles from my house on the farm, actually in a place that is a farm, it's called Alexandria Farms right here in Hamilton, Alabama, where some dear friends of mine have uh, these beautiful horses. Can you just see just a, a few of them right there? Oh my, they're so gorgeous. And uh, so they've let me come out here today to show you and to tell you about someone very special. So what I'm looking at right here, is she not gorgeous? I think horses are probably the most beautiful animal that God made, period. But this one is called Secret Empress. I got that right, didn't I, Eddie? Yes. Secret Empress, yes. And uh, this horse is extremely special to me for actually a very personal reason. Now she may kiss me every once in a while, which will be fine as long as she doesn't nibble too much. But this horse is very, very special because she is the great granddaughter of the extraordinary racehorse named Secretariat. Now, Secretariat, over the last couple of years especially, has become very, very dear to me. And uh, so I wanna tell you why, because I believe what I'm about to tell you about right now is actually gonna, you're gonna help you to understand why he actually matters for you too. Before I get started telling you about Secretariat and we talk about your great grandfather, which by the way, she has some unusual characteristics that actually favor her great grandfather a lot. She's got the three boots, just like Secretariat had. She's actually a lot of his same coloring. So she's very, very special. But there's a scripture before I tell you about Secretariat that's important to what we're talking about. Do you remember last week when we talked about believing with all of our heart when we pray? Whenever we pray, we don't just pray these, you know, lighthearted prayers that we're praying, thinking about other things. But the most effective prayers are prayers that we pray with all of our heart. That's why Jeremiah 29, 13 says it this way. He says, when you will search for me and find me, when you search for me with all of your heart. Just listen to that. Just that, that phrase alone. You will find me, God says, when you search for me with all of your heart. Now, Jesus said it again in Matthew 22nd chapter and the 39th verse, I believe it is, or 37th verse. He says this. He says the most important commandment of all is that you will love the Lord your God with all of your heart, all of your soul, all your mind and strength. Just the phrase, all of your heart. Just what does that mean? Loving God with all of your heart. Praying with all of your heart. God says it's so important that of all the verses and the laws of the Bible, that one, is the most important one of all. In other words, God's saying, I don't want part of your heart. I don't want just some passive approach. You know why I think part of that is? Because there's nothing God has ever done for you and me that he did half-hearted. When he gave us the sacrifice he gave to purchase our salvation, he didn't give part of heaven. No, he gave his most precious possession. He gave what was to him all of his heart. When you look at what Jesus did on the cross, you don't see a passive approach. You see Jesus, you see Jesus giving it all of his heart. <laughs> That's the truth, isn't it? Secret Empress, she's amening me. I like that. Thank you, sweetheart. Jesus did everything he did with all of his heart. And that's why, how could we give him any less? The other day, a good friend of mine, hey, Eddie, come here, honey. just hold her right down. Let me talk to my friends, but just hold her right here by me. The other day, some of my friends, uh, a good friend of mine was telling me about something that uh, Banning Leapshire, a young man I love, said. 
think about this. He said, have you ever walked through a graveyard and looked at a tombstone where they write things about the people on the tombstone? And the tombstone say something like, here lies so-and-so who gave God 99%. You know, you'd think, well, 99% is a pretty good bit. But what was the 1% he held back? You know, sometimes it's like we think almost that giving God, oh man, even half of us is a lot. That's not what he asked for. You know, we think, well, you know, if I give God, whoa, 75% of my life and my heart, you know, that's the most part. That's not what he asked for. He said, all, I want it all, because that's what he's given to us. He's given all. And all we have has come from him anyway. He deserves nothing less. You know, the best way I know to describe this is to tell you today, you are on a pursuit to know this God, to experience and encounter him and his will. And listen, my sweet friend, our needs are too great. Yours are, mine are. Our nation's need, our world's global need right now is far too great for some passive approach in prayer. No, we, it is time more than ever for you and me to pursue God and his will in the earth with all of our hearts. God is looking today for people who will pray with everything they've got, seek him with everything they've got, live for him with everything they've got, know him with, that he is the goal of our lives. He's the prize of our heart. He's what we are living for, pursuing with everything we've got. Some people think, well, that's just a little too radical. That's just like, whoa, I don't think all that's really necessary. You know, there's some people think, hey, I go to church once a week. You know, I've been baptized. I volunteer. I do good works. When I die, I'm going to go to heaven. And I'm happy with that. That's enough. Well, you know, for some people, that may be enough. But uh, honey, I just can't be satisfied with normal. Normal is all around us. And I'll tell you this, your greatest battle in life will be your battle with normal. Because normal is easy, normal is comfortable, normal is safe, but normal is empty. And part of the reason I can't have a normal life is we don't serve a normal God. I wanna give him all my heart. Now, let me tell you why I'm standing by Secretariat's great granddaughter. A couple years ago, I was um, driving down the road and I was on my phone and something happened that really changed my life. I came up on this clip, you know how things pop up on your phone just out of nowhere, you didn't know it was gonna be up. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, I get this little clip on the phone that said, Secretariat's race or something like that. Secretariat's, you know, uh, triple crown race or something. Well, I'll be honest with you, I didn't know about Secretariat. I didn't know about uh, I love horses, but I've never been a race horse person. So I thought, well, no, I was just, you know, riding in the car. I'll see what this is. I tapped it, and up comes the race that Secretariat ran when she, when he ran in the uh, Belmont Stakes, in that great race where he won the Triple Crown. What was weird was when I watched this race of, which, of a horse I didn't know about, a race I didn't know about, a race that was in 1973, I'm just watching this on a normal day, all of a sudden I just began to weep. I was just like sobbing, watching a horse race. And I'm thinking, what is wrong with me? I don't even cry very often. I had to watch it again. And every time I watched it, I'm just weeping. I began to search this the information on this horse, and I don't have time to tell you all about it. You can look into it after we talk today. But in a nutshell, Secretariat was an amazing horse. Her great-grandpa, who was born in 1970, and as soon as Secretariat was born, they knew that he was a special horse. And so long story short, they began to put him in these races, and he began to win. And uh, Secretariat ends up being qualified to run for the triple crown race. Now, 
No one had won the Triple Crown in 25 years. Well, in the first race, the Kentucky Derby, as normal for Secretariat, he started off last in the race. I mean, when the, when the doors opened and the horses took off, you know, Secretariat holds back. All of a sudden, he just takes off and just whoosh. I mean, he's just gone, and he wins the race and actually sets the record. Second race, the Preckness uh, Derby. Is that what you call it, I hope? He, uh, Preckness, Preckness, Preckness. <laughs> Same thing happens. He pulls back, and then all of a sudden, he just takes off, and he runs, and he wins the race. The third race, the Belmont Stakes. Now, this race... There was a little bit of more of a question about whether or not he would actually pull this one off because of his build, his huge stature. They just weren't even sure because this race was, a, was the longest race of all and also because he was running against a horse named Sham. Now, a lot of people thought Sham was going to be the one that would possibly win the Belmont Stakes because he was a little bit more fitted for those longer enduring races. But on the race, the day of the race for the Belmont Stakes, with everything at stake for Secretariat, I studied it and I loved this part of it. They said on the morning of the race that Secretariat woke up on a mission. Oh, I love that. They said it was like he knew something was up. He knew what was coming. It was already in his heart. They said that when they were, they were trying to groom him and get him ready for the race, that he just kept rearing up on his back legs. They said whenever they took him out to, with the other horses, he was stomping the ground, sort of to intimidate the other horses. But honey, when those doors opened, this time Secretariat didn't hold back. He gave it everything he had. And I mean from the hello get-go, he took off. And he was running for the little while right next, sort of nose and nose up against Sham. When all of a sudden, Secretariat took off and he ran like no horse has ever run. And he, he won the race, not by just two or three lengths. Oh no, he set the world record of 31 lengths. I want you to watch right now. I want you to see this race that I watched that day in my car. And when you see this race, I want you to think this to yourself, my sweet front porch friend. I want you to see yourself as Secretariat. I want you to see in you that passion for a crown that our Savior Jesus has to give you. Our ultimate crown is Him. I want you to see the permission God is giving you to run after him with all of your heart. I want you to see a secretariat takes off and he is driven by a passion to win what God is calling you to pray like, live like, and pursue like. And let me tell you something. Let me just give you a little heads up. Just like secretariat, you're going to be running against sham Christianity for the rest of your life. For all of your life and your walk with God, you're going to be running next to people who say they're Christians and they want to tell you all this stuff is not necessary. It's not necessary to pray like that. It's not necessary to worship like that. It's not necessary for you to pray so long and so excessive and, and being like you are. Oh, this is not necessary. Oh, come on. You're going to be running next to that for the rest of your life. But I want to tell you something. I want you to see Secretariat. And when you see Secretariat, I want you to see what God is telling you to do. Run, my friend, run. Watch this video, and I've got to come back, and I want to pray with you. Ready to go for this tremendous Belmont stick. Everybody's in line, and they're off. Looks like the early lead goes to Mike Gallant. Yes, Mike Gallant going for the lead with Christ the Prince on the outside. Secretary to away very well, has good position on the rail, and in fact is now going up with the leader. They're moving for the first turn. It is Secretariat. Sham on the outside is also moving along strongly. And now it's Sham. Sham and Secretariat are right together into the first turn. Mike Gallant has third behind them. Then it's twice the Prince, and the trailer is Private Smiles as they go by the turn. Those two together, Sham on the outside. Sham getting ahead in front as they move around the turn with Secretary at second. Then there's a large gap. They get eight lengths back to Mike Gallon in third and Vice of Prince fourth. And Private Smiles is still a trailer. 
They're on the back stretch. It's almost a match race now. Secretariat's on the inside by a head. Sham is on the outside. They've opened 10 lengths on Mike Gallant, who is third by a head, with White the Prince fourth. Then it's another eight lengths back to Private Smile, who is trailing the field. They continue down the back stretch, and that Secretariat not taking the lead. He's got it by about a length and a half. Still Sham, 10 lengths back. Mike Gallant fights the Prince. They're moving on the turn now. For the turn at Secretariat, it looks like he's opening. The lead is increasing. Make it three, three and a half. He's moving into the turn. Secretariat holding on to a large lead. Jam is second, and then it's a long way back to my gallon and twice a print. They're on the turn, and Secretariat is blazing along. The first three quarters of a mile in 109 and four fifths. Secretariat is blazing now. He is moving like a tremendous machine. Secretariat by 12. Secretariat by 14 lengths on the turn. Jam is dropping back. It looks like they'll catch him today. As my gallon and Mike the Prince are both coming up to him now. The Secretariat is all alone. He's out there almost a sixteenth of a mile away from the rest of the horses. Secretariat is in a position that is impossible to catch. He's into the stretch. Secretariat leads his field by 18 lengths. And now Mike the Prince is taken second. this race 224 almost unbelievable at the head of the stretch secretariat had already destroyed this field as you can see he was almost a 16th of a length rather a 16th of a mile in front and as he went through the stretch ron jerkoff who never did anything but hand ride never used the whip made it almost embarrassing for the rest of the horses I suppose you can't really be embarrassed by being beaten by the greatest horse in the past century. At the wire, Secretariat, all alone. And then it's such a problem to count lengths from that point. I said 25, it could conceivably have been more. Oh, my friend, does that stir your heart like it does mine? I can still hardly ever watch that race without still weeping. That's why I had to come here today and just literally just get as close to Secretariat as I possibly could by standing here with his great granddaughter, which I think is significant to you and me today. Because I believe God is wanting to say to you, if you will pursue him like that with all of your heart, no matter what people think in the stands or no matter what people think that's running next to you, run, my friend. And did you notice what the announcer said about Secretariat? At one point in the race, the announcer says of Secretariat, he says, he's out there and he's all alone. There's going to be many times that you're going to be running for God and you will feel all alone. Like there's nobody else that's out there and nobody else that wants to run like you run. But you can't stop or slow down you got to keep running. you got to keep pursuing. Because there's a prize at the end of this race that's worth running for. Oh, my friend. I believe today God is calling you. Calling you to a place in Him. Calling you to a place of faith. Like you've never experienced before. Now, I want to tell you the secret of what happened in that the secretary had died when he was 19 years old. They did an autopsy on Secretariat's body, and they found something that no one knew. When they did the autopsy on Secretariat, they found the 
and Secretariat's heart was almost three sizes larger than the normal heart of a horse. What are you saying, Miss Karen? I'm saying that Sham had the look, but Secretariat had the heart. And today, God is asking for you to give him all of your heart, all of your faith, all of your passion, and all your pursuit. There's one last thing. There's a scripture, Psalms 119, in the New King James Version that says this. It says, I will obey your, I will, I will run after your commandments, O Lord, for you have enlarged my heart. Can you believe that? I believe that God may have made secretariat just to be the description of that verse at this moment. Sometimes I even wonder if God made secretariat to run that race just to show us what he wants our race to look like. Father, strengthen my friend today. I pray for my front porch friend to be renewed in faith to run this race. I pray that if they are weary, you will give them supernatural strength. I pray that if they are discouraged, you would encourage their faith. I pray for those that are running today, in spite of opposition, that they would keep running. I pray they will not be distracted by what people say in the stands of their lives. I pray they will not be distracted by normal. I pray they will move and run at the pace you're calling them to. And God, I pray that they will finish this race. They will set their face like flint, determined to do your will and experience all that you are and the crown that you have waiting in Jesus' name. Oh, my dear friend, would you comment below? Comment below and let me know what God is doing in your life, what God is speaking to you, and what prayer needs that you have. We would love to hear from you. Secret Empress, would you not love to hear the comments from our friends? I think she would love to know what you thought about her great-grandpa and the message that he taught us. So thank you, Secret Empress, for being with us today, all right? And thank you. I love you, my front porch friend, so much. I can't wait to read your comments. Keep running. I'm running beside you.